Transitions theory focuses on an individual's response to change, supporting the individual through the transition, and promoting optimal health. This includes physically, emotionally, and within the context of culture and society. This theory provides a framework to guide nursing care before, during, and after the transition. Stavarsky in 2018 found that by applying transition theory, nurses can engender hope and improve patient outcomes. This study utilized a standard set of hope engendering nurse interventions. And the study aimed to provide concrete ways for nurses to support transition. Stavarsky assessed both patient and nurse perception of the effectiveness of each intervention in supporting the transition process. The patient experience is composed of transitions. The transition from wellness to illness, from home to the hospital, and from illness back to health. But transitions are not limited to our inpatient population. This theory is also very applicable in the community setting as well as in nursing education. For example, a nursing student faces a major transition when they graduate, obtain their license, and enter clinical practice for the first time. In the meta paradigm of transitions theory, an individual or the person is impacted by a change in health or environment that initiates the transition process. The nurse's role in this process is to support the patient to successfully cope with the transition and promote optimal health. There are a number of key assumptions that are important to applying transitions theory correctly. The transition process begins before and extends after the external change. Each individual experiences change with a different response and with different outcomes. It's also important to note that families are impacted by these changes as well. Patient outcomes are impacted by the transition experience and preventative and therapeutic interventions can impact the outcome. Individuals are capable of learning to embrace new roles and challenges in response um, to the transition or the change that they're presented with. And the environment and personal characteristics both shape the individual's experience. So in regards to environment, this includes the physical environment as well as social, cultural, and societal pressures and then the personal characteristics of gender, race, and sexual orientation will all play a part in the transition process. There are five properties that define a transition. The first one is time. This is the moment a situation comes into awareness. This could be the first symptom, diagnosis, or major life event. The end period for that time is more fluid. That's focused on the internal experience of the individual. The process begins with confusion or neutrality as the individual adjusts to the change that has occurred. And then in the second phase of process, there's a new beginning or a time when bridges are built um, to move forward with a successful transition. There's also a period of disconnectedness, and this is a disruption in the feelings of security, inconsistency between past, present, and future states of health, and the regular pattern of life is disrupted. Awareness is the focus on the internal experience. The individual is understanding the event, situation, and triggers, um, and is also able to define the meaning of the change when they reach that level of awareness. And milestones 
are points that delineate progress and also identify phases in the transition. Milestones are important to signify critical points for assessment or intervention to ensure a successful transition has occurred. As I've mentioned, transitions theory can be applied in the clinical setting, in the community, and in nursing education. Um, and there are four types of triggers that would define a transition. So the first one is health illness. And that's the first one that would come to mind when we think of a patient coming into the clinical setting, they've had a change in health, and as the nurse, we're supporting them through that. The next trigger is developmental. So this is a change in age. For example, an adolescent is going through a developmental change or an aging adult is going through a developmental change, those different age-related life transitions. Developmental also includes role changes. So motherhood would be a role change when a patient comes in to give birth or when a patient comes in and finds out um, that she's pregnant. Um, for the first time, there's a role change that's taking place um, as that patient looks at their future and what um, life will be like in the next phase of the transition. A situational trigger could be admission or discharge from the hospital. Um, and it also includes a student nurse graduating and becoming a new grad nurse. Um, so a, a larger situational change. And then the largest group that we look at here is organizational. So this trigger is not focused on the individual. It's actually focused on the entire community. And some examples include a new chief nursing officer um, and how that would affect all of the nurses that work for that person. Also implementation of technology. So when there's um, an electronic medical record, being rolled out and everyone needs to make the transition to learn how to utilize that. Um, so those are some examples of a trigger that would cause a change and put a stressor on the entire community. A strength of this theory is that it is applicable to all patients. Everyone coming into a hospital facility or a clinical setting is experiencing a transition. Um, and it's also applicable um, to a wider variety of individuals in the community and in the educational setting. A lot of people are experiencing transitions and this theory can be applied to support them to have the best outcomes. All adults can grow in the ability to respond to transition. Um, and Stavarsky in 2018, in that study that we talked about earlier, found that by applying transition theory, nurses can engender hope and improve outcomes. Okay, so we've seen that adults can grow in their ability to respond to transition and nurses can support them to have the best possible outcomes. Some weaknesses of this theory are the subjective nature which can make it difficult to quantify success. Um, in the Stavarsky study, they used surveys by patients and nurses um, to have some quantifiable information to show that this theory was making a difference. Um, additionally, the endpoint can be uncertain because it is internal, so it's important to have those milestones and follow-ups to ensure a successful transition. And lastly are the nurse time constraints and workload. Limit a nurse's ability to apply the necessary time to encourage and support patients in transition. Um, that's something that is supported as well by the Stavarsky study. Now I'm going to apply transitions theory 
to the transition from student nurse to new graduate nurse working in the clinical setting. A 2017 study by Bennett, Grimsley A, Grimsley L, and Rod found that new graduate nurses reported high levels of stress coming from both their employers and patients in their care. This stress signifies an ineffective transition. And this is something that I've seen personally as a unit preceptor. So for this case study, I'm going to focus on one nurse in particular who was an accomplished student nurse, intelligent, compassionate, but lacking experience in the nursing field. And the hospital did not have a lot of support for this nurse in that transition. There was a six week orientation period, but after that nurses were on their own and there was not a lot of support from other nurses on the unit once that nurse finished her orientation program. So this nurse stuck it out for a year until she had enough experience to move on to a hospital with more transition support. That hospital had a mentorship program for nurses once they completed their orientation. It also had a new graduate support group where other new graduate nurses could come together and they could ask questions um, and transition more successfully. So the difference here is that this nurse has now stayed on at that hospital for over 10 years. She's an excellent nurse. She had everything she needed to become an excellent nurse, but she did not have the support for an effective transition in her first position. So this ineffective transition hurt the nurse, the patients in her care due to lack of continuity um, because of turnover, and it also hurt the unit because this scenario happened over and over again. Um, transition support initially would have been an investment from the administration, but it would have improved patient care and nurse retention and that would have benefited the entire facility. So this is just one example of how transitions theory can apply to make a big difference in the life of one individual, and it can also affect an entire community. Here's a list of references that I consulted in creating this presentation. Um, and thank you for taking the time to view my presentation on transitions theory.